At the end of the topic, you will be able to identify the various reasons for the revolt of 1857, recognize the British policies that instigated this revolt. The revolt of 1857 was the most severe outburst of anger and discontent accumulated in the hearts of various sections of the Indian society. This revolt was supported by all sections of people. Hindus and Muslims kept their religious differences aside and fought together in order to free themselves from foreign subjugation. The great armed rebellion which took place in India in 1857 was called the first war of independence. The British vigorously followed the policy of annexations, displacing the old ruling kingdoms. Sindh, Punjab, Jhansi and Oudh kingdoms were annexed to British India. Lord Dalhousie, 1848-1856, the Governor-General of India, promoted further annexations through many evil-designed steps. The doctrine of lapse was a brainchild of Lord Dalhousie. If the ruler had no children, there was a practice of adopting a son. Dalhousie declared that the adoption without permission by the British was not valid. The British refused to consent to the kings to adopt a child and annex their kingdoms. The ruling class and zamindars were displaced and the lands were taken by the british economic reasons one of the main reasons for the revolt in 1857 was the economic exploitation of the british the revenue policies of the british such as permanent settlement and rajdwari brought in large scale discontentment the taxes were collected even during famines and droughts whereas in earlier times the native rajas waived taxes during that period with the advent of industrial revolution the british established cotton textile industries in their country and took no measures to improve the agriculture in india as a result the british discouraged the cotton textile industry in india and india was made as a market for its goods religious reasons from 1813 AD christian missionaries entered into india with an intention to civilize the indians by converting them as christians abolition of sati widow remarriage and introduction of railways where people can travel together without any caste barriers were some of the impact of the missionaries the christian missionaries established schools for boys and girls in which teaching of the bible was also compulsory this made the orthodox hindus and muslims to suspect the british attitude towards indians muslim maulvis also called a holy war against christianity military reasons the major part of the british army in india was composed of indians they formed 7/8 of the total of the government troops in india all the higher posts were reserved for the english and a great disparity arose between the salaries of indian and european soldiers the introduction of the new rifle called enfield rifle created further discontentment among the soldiers The cartridges of these rifles were smeared with the fat of cows and pigs as grease and the paper covering them had to be bitten off before they could be loaded into the rifles. The Muslims had hatred towards pigs and Hindus had devotion to cows so the Hindu and Muslim soldiers refused to accept the greased cartridges. The British punished those Indian soldiers who refused to use the rifles and this incident sparked the revolt of 1857 in india indian people from all sections were unhappy 
with the administration of British in India. In the year 1857, a revolt broke out in India against the British rule. The immediate cause was the introduction of a new Enfield rifle. Its cartridge was greased with the fat of pigs and cows, which were refused by the Hindu and Muslim soldiers. This resulted in the Sepoy Mutiny in 1857. Mangal Pandey, an Indian soldier, killed a British officer for forcing him to use the rifle. Later, he was executed on 9th May 1857. This sparked the revolt of 1857 in India. Other reasons were invasion of Bengal by the British in 1757 and the doctrine of lapse introduced by Dalhousie. Indian cottage industries and handicrafts suffered a setback because of the British Industrial Revolution. Lastly, Indian culture and religious sentiments were hurt. The participants of the revolt were individual rulers, sepoys and civilians. The British were shocked by this revolt of 1857 and called this revolt as the first war of independence. In this topic you have learnt the great armed rebellion which took place in India in 1857 was called the first war of independence the revolt of 1857 in india was due to common aversion among indian people against the british rule in india the doctrine of lapse was introduced by dalhousie as a major instrument of annexation agriculture suffered a major setback with the british rule the british punished those indian soldiers for refusing to use the enfield rifles and this incident sparked the revolt of 1857 in india at the end of the topic you will be able to explain the main events of the revolt of 1857 describe the causes for the failure of the revolt discuss the results of the revolt examine the changes brought out after 1857 in india On 9th May 1857 Mangal Pandey a Brahmin sepoy started this revolt in Meerut by shooting a British officer. On 10th May the sepoys revolted and shot down their officers, freed the prisoners, set English bungalows on fire and marched to Delhi. The revolt soon extended to many parts of North and Central India. In September 1857 Delhi was recaptured by the British. Bahadur Shah was taken as a prisoner and was sent to Rangoon in Burma where he died in 1862 his three sons were captured and shot dead by the british aud was recaptured by the british in september 1858 throughout the revolt hindus and muslims worked together Though the revolt was suppressed by the end of 1858 it took many years to restore peace Peshwa Baji Rao adopted Nana Sahib as his son the title Peshwa means noble Maratha prince in Kanpur Nana Sahib was initially in favor of the british but later attacked a british group that took refuge in the southern part of Kanpur Nana Sahib fired and bombarded the group held by General Wheeler in 1857 and the British suffered severe loss the British were offered a choice to flee at Sati Chaura Ghat of the Ganges river and it resulted in a failure due to conspiracy and both the sides fired this incident is called Sati Chaura massacre British women and children were taken under Nana Sahib's custody later even they were killed in the Bibi Ghar massacre the british forces reached kanpur on july 16 1857 and set nana sahib's house on fire nana sahib was proclaimed as a peshwa 
and his succession was suspended by the British. Nana Sahib fled to Nepal and passed away in the year 1906. Nawab Wajid Ali Shah's wife Begum Hazarat Mahal of Oud headed the revolt at Lucknow. She confirmed her son Birgis Qadar as the Nawab of Oud. Sir Henry Lawrence was murdered by the mutineers. In March 1858, Lucknow was recaptured by General Outram and Havelock. A huge amount of its population was mercilessly murdered. Rani Lakshmi Bai was a talented queen and she revolted against the British when she was not allowed to adopt a son to inherit her kingdom after her husband's death in 1854. So, in Jhansi, Rani Lakshmi Bai was proclaimed as a ruler and she sent the troops to the battlefield. She joined hands with Maulvi and Nana Sahib in 1857 revolt against the British. Tantia Top's father was a noble at the court of Maratha Peshwa Baji Rao. Tantia Top developed friendship with Nana Sahib, the adopted son of Peshwa. Tantia Top was a close associate of Nana Sahib in the freedom struggle and led the army in 1858 against the British. The idea of nationalism and unity was not widespread among the Indians. The revolt covered only certain pockets of India. The Ghurkhas, the Rajputs and the Sikhs did not actually take part in the revolt. The resources of Indians were meagre and there was no effective leadership. The British were far better organized in terms of arms, ammunition and men. They had good command over the navy and they could easily transport men and material across the nation using the railway connectivity. The rule of the English East India Company ended in India. The administration of India was taken over by Queen Victoria directly. The proclamation of Queen Victoria was announced on 1st November 1858. The Governor General of India now came to be called as the Viceroy of India. The policy of annexation was stopped and complete religious freedom was guaranteed. The Indians realized the need for organizing national movements and political organizations based on national consciousness. A constitutional form of struggle was launched from the last quarter of the 19th century. On November 1, 1858, a royal darbar was held at Allahabad where the Queen's proclamation was declared. Lord Canning read the Queen's proclamation at the darbar. He was the last Governor-General and the first Viceroy of India. India shall be governed by the Queen according to the Act. The Board of Control and the Court of Directors was eliminated. The office of a Secretary of State was formed. He was helped by a council consisting of 15 members. The doctrine of lapse was cancelled. Rebels were granted pardon except those who were directly involved in killing British subjects. In this topic you have learnt the revolt started in Meerut on 9th May 1857. The revolt spread to many parts of North and Central India. The revolt was crushed by the British. Queen Victoria's proclamation was issued in 1858.